Elizabeth Warren was asked if she'd be okay with primaries against any sitting Democrats. So uh, here's Jank effectively uh, asking, what are your thoughts on like what we're doing? Now, I don't know if Elizabeth Warren knows the details of what we're doing with Justice Democrats, what we're in the process of doing. You know, you guys have seen a bunch of the candidates that we've, la we've, we've launched, but here's her answer to that question of what are your thoughts on the sitting Dems? Is there any Democratic senator that you wouldn't support in a primary uh, because they are not progressive enough or they're too beholden to their donors? You know, right now, I gotta say, I've worked with all of my colleagues and shoot, are there places where I don't agree with them? You bet. Are there places I have fought with them? Yes, there have, and places I will continue to fight with them. But there are also places where they've stood up for hardworking families where we couldn't get one Republican to stand with us, not one, not one. We talk about expanding Social Security and we get all of the Democrats standing with us. How many Republicans did we get for that one? None. We can't even get a vote on refinancing student loans. We can't even get a vote on, on, our, on, on uh, the bill we've got right now to try to import drugs from uh, Canada, which would help bring down health care costs. There are things we want to do in the Democratic caucus. There are some things for which all of the Democrats have stood strong and we can't get a single Republican to come across with us. Mostly, I'm saving my fire for those guys. I'm saving my fire for those guys. Wow. So this is the second best Democratic senator we have, by a mile and a half, by the way, it's not even close. She's without question the second best Democratic senator we have. Her, her argument is GOP bad, Democrat good. Republicans bad, Democrats good. We're not as bad as Trump. That's the point she's making. Uh, hey, Liz, that's what Hillary Clinton ran on. And it didn't work. You want to know why? That's not an inspiring message. And it's also the easiest thing in human history. I mean, this is what Cornell West said to Bill Maher. You know, Bill Maher's like, yeah, well, Hillary's better than Trump. And Cornell was like, everybody's fucking better than Trump. So what does that mean? <laughs> that's your bar now? Like, all right, that's enough. So everybody, you know, everybody go vote and fall in line and shut up. So what? We don't inspire you. So what? There are many Democrats who are beholden to their donors. So what? There are many Democrats who agree with the Republicans a large percentage of the time. But know your role. Go fall in line and be a good little puppet to the Democratic Party. Liz, when the Democrats fail, it's not because the voters have let down the Democrats. It's because the Democrats have let down the voters. If the Democrats were doing their job effectively, they would win. And they would win in a landslide, they would win every election. But they're not doing their job effectively. And what you're saying is, suck it up and deal with it, I'm only gonna attack the other side. What political courage you have, Elizabeth Warren. Ooh, Orrin Hatch is bad. Chuck Grassley is bad. Jeff Sessions and Donald Trump are bad. Oh, so brave, Liz, so brave. Let me ask you a question. He, I mean, he just laid it out there for you. He said, are there any Democrats, you know, you'd be cool with primarying because they're, they agree too much with Trump or they're too beholden to their donors. And she said, basically, no, no, I don't want to do anything. So, okay, Claire McCaskill. You know how much she has voted with Trump? 50% of the time, half the time, she's voted with Donald Trump. And Elizabeth Warren says, whoa, you're going to primary your, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Slow down. Uh, Joe Donnelly of Indiana, 56% of the time he votes with Trump. Heidi Heidkamp, 63% of the time. She votes with Trump. Joe Manchin, who we're going to get to in a, in a longer segment in a little bit. He only voted against three 
of Trump's 16 cabinet appointments. And what does Elizabeth Warren say? I'm saving my fire for the other side. But the reason the other side is winning is because these are the kinds of Democrats we have. Ever thought of that? That maybe that's the reason why the Democrats are losing? Because you refuse to attack the worst on our side who keep dragging the party further and further down? When the Democrats don't stand for anything, they're not going to win anything. Trump's fake populism was able to beat the Democrats' no message, vacuous, vapid message that Hillary Clinton provided. So the problem is the corporate Democrats. That's the problem. And if you refuse to attack them, you're helping the Republicans. I don't think... Uh, it's clear she doesn't get this. So think about how sad it is that the second best Democratic senator is circling the wagons for a party where um, only, only 31 Democratic senators support a $15 minimum wage. Now, don't get me wrong. Before it was like 12 or something like that. It was a lower number before. And Bernie has gotten more on board for that. But the fact that you're willing to defend all of the Democratic senators when only 31 of them are even for a living wage... So, okay, you're going to defend some people who aren't for a living wage? Liz, you're not getting it. That's a non-negotiable. That's not like a, hey, what's your opinion on whether or not somebody should be able to survive on bare necessities if they work a full-time job? That's not, that's not a, a discussion where there are two valid sides and, hey, that's just your opinion. No, that's why it's like, you are wrong and you're actually rather loathsome of a human being if you say somebody should work full-time and not make enough money to survive. But Elizabeth Warren is saying, I'm not going to attack anybody on my side who doesn't want a living wage. I'm going to give them a pass. Why? Because they have a D by their name. So what am I going to do? I got to defend them. Elizabeth Warren has done many good things. Let me be clear. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, she's the one who pushed Obama to do it. And that saved... Consumers, $11 billion. $11 billion worth of people being ripped off and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, because of Elizabeth Warren, has gotten people back their own money. So I don't want to leave you the wrong impression here to make you think like, oh, she's as bad as Hillary Clinton. No way, no way. And if somebody makes that point, you're just dead fucking wrong because her record is way more progressive than Hillary Clinton or a lot of the corporate Democrats. But again, my point is this is the second best Democrat we have and she refuses to stand up to the corporatists in her own party. So she herself is not as bad as these corporate Democrats. Oh, but she's, she's an apologist for those corporate Democrats. And that's part of the problem because they're the ones who are dragging down the party and she doesn't uh, recognize it. And I'll leave you with one more fact on this story, which I think is an absolutely devastating fact. She's saying, yeah, no, I'm not going to. I'm saving my fire for the other side. I'm not going to talk about the Democrats and how beholden they are uh, to donors and and how many of them vote with Trump too much and are too right wing. Well, then, Liz, you are openly defending a party where how many Democrats in the Senate have signed on to Medicare for all? Zero. Bernie Sanders' bill, Medicare for all, that he's proposed in the Senate has no co-sponsors. None. None. And Elizabeth Warren is saying, yes, I will defend a Democratic Party that doesn't stand up for Medicare for all. So an issue that progressives say, rightly, is non-negotiable. If you can't get on board for Medicare for all, don't expect people to get off, to get inspired and go vote for you. Because why would they do that? You're not for... You're not for the most basic thing that every other industrialized nation has. Every other one. Every other one. And they pay less for their health care and they have better outcomes. And medical bankruptcies in those countries aren't a thing. And nobody dies because they don't have access to basic care. Here in the U.S., 45,000 people die because they don't have access to basic care. Medical bills is one of the top causes of bankruptcy. But Elizabeth Warren is saying, I will defend a party that wants you to take your half measure and shut up. Obamacare's good enough. That's as far as we're going. And even though every Democratic senator is against Medicare for all, they haven't signed on to Bernie Sanders' bill. They haven't co-sponsored it. I'm going to defend them. Well, then you're defending a position which is 
incredibly stupid and corrupt because many of the Democrats take money from the health insurance companies, the rapacious for-profit health insurance companies that price gouge you as much as possible at every turn. This is how you build a party that is unable to beat Donald fucking Trump, a reality star buffoon. Is because you have no message. Your message is, we're not them, they're worse. Well, people went, what does that even, I don't even know what that means. I'll go with the other guy because, again, the fake populism do people over. Now, at the end of the day, Trump is not a real populist, that's clear. And he's not looking out for the people, that's obvious. Everybody knows that, that's super easy. But the question is, what strategy do we take in order to beat him? What direction do we go in in order to beat him and the Republicans in the future? And Elizabeth Warren is saying, not the correct one. Let's do the same thing that led to the losses. I will circle the wagons and defend every single Democratic senator, even though none of them support Medicare for All. Bernie Sanders is the only one who supports Medicare for All in the Senate. So you're defending people who say, I'm going to turn my back on the American people and go in the opposite direction when 60% of the American people want Medicare for All. That's pathetic, Elizabeth Warren. Now, you know, Jenk actually said it best. He said, She's been in Washington too long. I think that's what's happening with Elizabeth Warren. Don't get me wrong, she's more Machiavellian and calculating than I thought she was. Um, but the first sign of, oh, she's really like politically calculating here was when she refused to endorse Bernie Sanders and then later on endorse Hillary Clinton. Because she was like, oh, let me like, what, what is the right political move to do here? She didn't go, okay, what are the policies? Who's the candidate I agree with most? Let me endorse that candidate. She didn't do that. It was Machiavellian calculating gross kind of uh, thinking. So I was clear she's a calculating politician and she's no Bernie Sanders, but now it's it's even worse than I thought is my point. And she's making that crystal clear and she needs to pop that Washington bubble and get out because there's still a lot of good in Elizabeth Warren, but the more she goes down this path, the more she's alienating the people who, if she were to run for president, she's going to need to vote for her in 2020. I think she's setting up a 2020 run here, uh, but she needs to course correct and she needs to course correct ASAP because these answers are not, I mean, they're terrible answers. They're terrible answers. You have to be unapologetic in your push for a living wage, free college, single payer Medicare for all, ending the wars, re-regulating war Wall Street, ending the drug war. If you're not unapologetic and take no prisoners for priorities that the American people want, and especially the progressive base wants, you're only hurting yourself and the party, and you're not going to win. And it is unconscionable that somebody as smart and reasonable as Elizabeth Warren is going to defend a party where not a single Democrat in the Senate, other than Bernie Sanders, including her, has signed on to Medicare for All. So, shame on you. Shame on you, Elizabeth Warren.